Hola, ¿qué tal? Mi nombre es Fernando Ayuso. Bienvenido de Mexican Seaweed. Este es el tercer video de entrevistas para el canal. En esta ocasión entrevisté a una bióloga marina de Canadá llamada Sam. Ella nos va a contar parte de sus experiencias como bióloga marina en Canadá y las oportunidades que ha tenido durante su trayectoria en esta carrera. Pero antes de comenzar te invito a que sigas a Sam en Instagram. Te dejaré el link acá abajo en la descripción. Sin más, comencemos. Okay, uh, first, uh, hi and thank you for giving us part of your time for this interview. Uh, this interview is because I am doing this project that is called uh, the Mexican Seaweed, that is a YouTube channel where I share knowledge and a lot of stuff about marine science, uh, you know, marine biology, it could be oceanography and stuff like that. And something that I started right now is to uh, share experience from other people to people who would like to start in this marine biology world, you know, that is thinking about study marine biology. And that's something that is really important to me that I share this kind of experience because uh, for me, I mean, as a student, when I started uh, college, I will, ha I, I will have liked to hear about this experience from other uh, students, other people who is right now in this uh, marine biology world. So, well, one more time, thank you for, for your time and let's, let's start. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Um yeah for having me i'm glad you asked and i love what you're doing yeah okay so we can start on uh, so uh the first question is oh yeah so sam uh, tell us a little bit about you why did you decide to study marine biology and where did you uh, study marine biology you know something like that yeah sure so um i guess my my passion for marine biology and why I wanted to study it started when I was super young um, and my parents and I would go on vacation to Florida and the States. So I'm from Canada um, in Ontario, which is very central. There's no coast anywhere near where I live. Um, so going down to the ocean was always such a special occasion for me. Um, and we would, you know, pick up shells and stuff. And but I always wondered what was out there, what was just like on the other side of the waves that I couldn't see. So it was always like in my mind as a kid and I would watch documentaries and read books and stuff. Like my mom couldn't get enough books from the library that mm. had to do with what I wanted to learn about. So, um, so yeah, I grew up basically just thinking about the ocean and then, you know, you always get asked as a kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I always said since I was 10 that I wanted to be a marine biologist. So then naturally going through school, you do like the career quizzes and stuff. And I would always like rig my answers to make sure that marine biologist was the outcome. Um, and then so I just kind of followed the career paths of the people that I would look up to or uh, the people I saw on TV. And so when it came time to go to uh, university, I uh, only had one option in my home province um of ontario so it was the university of guelph um that was the only one around even though we weren't near the ocean that had a marine biology degree program um so it was kind of like a no-brainer for me where i was applying to school um if i hadn't have gotten accepted i would have gone east or west in canada um but i was lucky that i really enjoyed my program um in school and um Yeah, so I did four years of undergrad in marine bio. And then along the way, I just sort of took any opportunity I could um, with like courses and stuff to actually go back to the ocean. Um, since my degree technically was marine and freshwater biology. So we did a lot of like rivers and lake system okay. stuff, which my heart wasn't always in. So, um, so yeah, so then I realized through that that I needed to get like um, to the ocean. So I took a lot of opportunities to do that too with field work. Courses yeah. and stuff. Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, right now, are you ha, have you finished uh, college? Right? Are you? Yeah. So I. Right, yep. What are you doing right now? Are, I mean, uh, are you in the master degree? Are you in a PhD program? 
What? Yeah, so I just finished a master's degree. So I did my marine biology undergrad and then I went into um, a master's of marine management program, which is um, like conservation focused. So it's it's less like marine or um, masters of science where it's strict research. It's more like social science focused, um, which was important for me coming out of my marine biology undergrad that I wanted to get more um, of the human aspect of all of the things that I love. So yeah. um, learning about like, how can we conserve species more from like the marine protected area or like fisheries management side rather than doing the strict um, like biological studies. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I just finished my master's degree um, at Christmas time. So a few months fresh of graduation. And um, then hopefully I'm going into a PhD uh, in the next coming year or two, but I'm okay. just working for now. Ah, okay, yeah. pretty cool, pretty interesting. So it is really difficult, right? You know, the masters, I, I haven't yeah. that experience yet, but I, I guess it, it has a lot, you have to put a lot of time in this, um, in this master's degree. Yeah. yeah, so my master's degree, um, it was, it was tricky, but it was, it was almost easier in a sense that all of the work that I was doing was something that I love. Okay. So in undergrad, when you have to take like your stats course or your math or yeah. like, I don't know, cellular biology, if that's not what you're into, yeah. you might not want to put as much work into it. But my master's degree, even though the work was more demanding, it was um, more like from my heart what I was working on. So it didn't okay. feel like as much work. So it's kind of like a, a give or take. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. The next question is, well, uh, are you working with something related uh, to marine biology right now? Yeah. So um, despite the, all the COVID stuff going on right now, I actually yeah. am still working uh, in an online capacity, which is pretty great. I mean, a lot of marine biology stuff, the literature reviews, the paper writing happens online anyway. So okay. I, I've been able to do that. But right now I'm working in, um, I guess you wouldn't necessarily call it a marine biology lab, but it's more of a fisheries science lab. Okay. So they do a lot of um, like modeling for um, like fisheries management systems, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a marine biology component to it for sure, but I'm working on um, a project in that lab that's looking at mapping the global shark meat trade. Yeah. So as opposed to shark finning, this is like the meat and stuff that's um, harvested and traded. So it's it's really interesting, but it comes from a bunch of different aspects of marine biology and um, like economics and trade and livelihood. So it's it's kind of a melting pot of subjects, yeah. but it's um, the my marine biology background has definitely helped me get this job in the first place. So, yeah. So, are you work? Uh, you you say that you work right now with sharks, right? Are you mm -hmm. working with yeah. an, an specific species, or you work with you know on general with sharks? Yeah, so um, right now the project that I'm working on is all species everywhere across the globe. But for my master's project specifically, I was looking at um, three different species of sharks and rays in Canadian waters. So I was looking at um, poor beagle sharks, which are like a cousin of the great whites. Yeah. I was looking at um, uh, dogfish and um, skates. So. So kind of a mix of elasmobranch species, but the sharks are kind of where my focus went. Um, and I was researching how marine protected areas are beneficial for those species um, in Canadian waters, which of course meant that I had to do a literature review looking across all species, yeah. but um, but yeah, so. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, the next one is, uh, well, the next one, you already answered this, but uh, so, what is your topic of inter of interest in marine biology? So the question, the answer will be sharks. Yeah, so sharks are definitely my my number one in the okay. in the marine world for sure. Um, that was sort of where my my interest in marine biology started was with sharks. I was just always fascinated by them. Um, and as like you know, you get older and you start to explore your interests a little bit more. And throughout my undergrad degree. Uh, it was just sharks all the way. And then of course I learned more about like manta rays and 
uh, skates and all the sorts of different different species that fall under the sort of sharks and rays umbrella. So, so I kind of fell in love with those too. But the first time I got into the water with sharks, um, I was probably in my second or third year of undergrad and that was it. Like I was just hooked from that moment and it was everything sharks and rays from then on. Yeah. I love like all learning about all sorts of different shark research and how it's done and stuff. A big part of my master's was looking at the technology that goes into shark um, research. So like the telemetry aspect, so the tagging and then the tracking and the analysis of all that kind of stuff. I think it's really, really cool. The technology that's come about even within the last like 10 years that's helped really advance the field. Um, Like fish and stuff have been monitored and tracked forever, but now like it's just completely exploded this whole world of uh, like shark ecological studies. And it's really awesome. Like great whites are obviously uh, like the pinnacle, like they're yeah. the number one. That's what everyone wants to hear about and talk <laughs> about and stuff. But yeah. but it's awesome because these sorts of things have also led to um, like all these um, online platforms. So Instagram is a huge one, but also the websites that yeah. um, tracking foundations have to show you like in real time where these sharks are. I just think yeah. it's such a great way to get people involved that, yeah, might not even be in interested in marine biology at all let alone sharks but they want to yeah. like show their kids or something you know i just it's really cool yeah okay next question is the, yeah uh how is the situation for a marine biologist uh, where you live yeah so i guess i kind of said that i'm province in ontario and more specifically like not anywhere near the ocean we have lakes and stuff but I knew growing up that if I wanted to do ocean science that I wasn't going to be able to live at home forever. So um, my undergrad school was in Ontario. So like I said, not near any ocean. But so for my master's, I actually moved to the east coast of Canada to Nova Scotia. And that's where I did my master's um, to sort of dive more into the specific marine science. Um, And then so the opportunities in Nova Scotia versus in Ontario are like tenfold. So yeah. there's there's definitely more um, opportunities for jobs and stuff like that. Um, not in my hometown, but so mm-hmm. I was sort of had to compromise where I wanted to live for the job that I wanted. But it was it was fine um, because it was totally worth it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But uh, I mean, in general, uh, you say the the East Coast, so you are mm-hmm. in the in the Atlantic, no? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, in the Atlantic. But yeah. there are no, I mean, for example, here in, in Mexico, uh, we have like five universities that give the this marine biology program. But there are a lot of people that want to get into the career. So we have a lot of demand of people. Uh, there are a lot of people. And the, uh, I ask you this question because, for example, here, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people almost every year uh, graduate from marine biology but it's really difficult to get a job being a marine biology you know because of the yeah totally the, yeah uh, but i don't know is is the same where where you studied marine biology or it's like you yeah. have more opportunities to being yeah so um that was sort of one of the things i had to think about when i finished my undergrad degree um was where did i want to be so um yeah. It, there was no jobs available right as soon as I finished my undergrad. Like we were all competing basically for one job at an aquarium. Yeah. <laughs> that was basically the only job. So that's why I think a lot of people from my undergrad program ended up doing a master's because it sort of gives you some time to to figure out maybe what you want to specialize in or where you want to end up. So that was where I went. And now that I'm finished my master's, um, a lot of the people in my program have had difficulty finding jobs in their, um, like where they want to work. So like government jobs are only so many um, academic jobs. So there's, there's a few universities on the East coast of Canada that do have like marine biology programs and have like faculties that work with ocean science. Um, But the jobs are very selective. And for the most part, you're better off getting a job in any of these places if you've done your master's in that lab. So, um, so for me in my, my master's program, we had to do an internship for the summer. So that was really, really awesome for all of us in my program, because it sort of 
forces you as part of your coursework to to go out and get a job yeah. so you kind of had to already put yourself into a career position i didn't end up getting a job with that with the organization that i worked for over the summer it was called the ocean tracking network so okay. um I don't know if you've heard, but it's part of like um, a global system of um, like telemetry okay. organizations. So researchers and stuff go through these organizations to get like tags to track sharks and fish and seals and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was a great, great opportunity. I loved it. I just didn't end up wanting to stay there because I realized okay. that eventually I would want to do a PhD kind of shifting my focus. Okay. Um, but there, yeah, there, the job sort of depends on how good you are at getting your foot in the door. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people that did their internships somewhere that they saw themselves working full time have now gotten jobs. So okay. um, that was helpful for us. But I think a lot of friends that I've had that have gotten jobs have been from being persistent and just okay. kind of putting yourself out there. There is definitely a lot of competition after you graduate. But if you can find like a niche, that like okay. you only you can fill then it's really yeah, helpful yeah. so for like for me i knew kind of where i wanted to go and then with this project that i'm working for now i sort of just emailed them until they said sure come and meet with us okay, so, okay. Yeah. yeah yeah that's just kind of how it goes i guess the next question is uh, okay what has been your best experience uh, uh, being a marine biologist it could be in the career or working or something like that. Yeah, my favorite experiences are related to field work, of course. That's what I think a lot of people would say. But um, I was able to do internships in South Africa and in the Bahamas. And both okay. of them were focused with shark research, but they were like my favorite things yeah. ever. It was it was where I learned like a lot of my technical skills working in the field, um, but it was also where I made the most connections. So okay. I have some friends, like my friend from Mexico City I met in the Bahamas. Um, okay. And we were like, so the people and the field work was just like my favorite thing. Okay. Um, but those experiences have kind of come outside of my schooling and my career. It was sort of something that I searched for externally. Okay. Um, within my career, like the jobs that I've had, I think my favorite experiences have been um, like the more clinical lab work that I've done. So I worked okay. with um, corals and did some like coral regeneration okay. studies and did like um, more like lab work stuff. So I did some yeah. DNA analysis and some protein extraction stuff. Although that wasn't the most fun, mm. like sitting in a lab for an entire summer, those yeah. um, those opportunities were, were so special to me because it was sort of where I grew as a scientist, okay. um, especially. So, so yeah, those are some of my favorite experiences, but the most fun is probably, yeah, out doing oh, well. field work. Um, a specific moment, if I can reflect, is probably um, like doing sharp work and like catching a shark and actually like having your hand on okay. the animal is just and feeling it is like the it, that's rewarding you could be out fishing for like a whole day yeah. and just the second that you that you get to like put your hands and do the work and like feel it is just such a special special moment yeah and, uh, okay it's pretty interesting so what would you like to know about the career when you were studying it or before you studied um, I guess the advice now that I wish that I had been given when I was in my, like throughout my schooling was mm. that you should try your hardest to get a publication before you try and do a PhD yeah, okay. <laughs> or, um, as soon as possible, basically. Mm -hmm. So, um, I like throughout my undergrad, I thought that publications were just for people who wanted to be in academia and do the whole yeah. like become a professor that kind of thing um which i never thought that was going to be my path i okay. i thought a hundred percent i'm going to go work with a like a non-profit organization or something like that okay. but like as i've sort of grown in this field i've realized that like my passions have sort of taken me more towards the academia side and i wish now that i had had a publication under my belt and gotten okay. a little bit more 
formal research practice in my undergrad when I had some um, support. I mean, not that I didn't have support in my master's, I had a ton, but that's sort of what I'm trying to do now and realizing that I could have probably done that in my undergrad as well okay. um, would have been really helpful. So even if you don't plan on ending up in like um, a professor role or in academia or at a university or something, I think having some sort of publication to your name is really helpful um, for getting grants, for getting job opportunities. Mm -hmm. That's that's like sort of um, an administrative thing that I wish I had known. Um, that doesn't really even have anything to do with marine science in general, but yeah. was probably the biggest takeaway because I think you learn different things depending on where your path takes you, but across the board, that would be my, my advice for sure. Um, okay. The last question is, well, what advices, what other advices can you give uh, people who want to study marine biology to do it? Um, I would just say, like, if you want to get into marine biology, you obviously have had like a passion for it and just yeah. don't ever let that sort of die. So you can, like for me it was sharks, but there was lots of opportunities along the way that could have put me into, I don't want to say an easier path, but something definitely more like readily just there. Like I could have taken a job that didn't yeah. have anything to do with sharks like a long time ago and who knows where I would have been, but um, just take any opportunity that you can get that has something to do with what has driven you to want to do this career in the first place, I think is really important um, mm -hmm. to sort of keep yourself in it. There was a lot of times that like in school that, you know, like I said, I think at the beginning you're studying cellular biology, but that doesn't have anything to do with like sharks or corals or anything yeah. like that. But at the end of the day, those things are, are useful in some aspect um down the line so if something's tricky or if something's a bit um like boring i don't know like statistics yeah. or something like that um if it's challenging it means that it's probably for the best that you learn that yeah. <laughs> those things because statistics for me specifically um i wish also i had taken some time to sort of master it a little bit more in my undergrad versus in my master's where you're sort of handed something and you just have to figure it out versus yeah. in undergrad when you have like profs or TAs or anybody around you or classmates that understand things better than you do. I don't yeah. know. Um, to sort of get those skills, those those things um, up front, even to have in the back of your, your mind in the long term can be helpful. Um, that's something that I, I wish I had, I had sort of taken advantage of, but um, in marine science specifically, I think taking um, the opportunity to get uh, experience from professionals or from people that you look up to um, to sort of understand how they got to be where they are is also super important. So for me, I did those internships that really solidified where I wanted to be in the marine space. And okay. a lot of those places take people who have no formal science training. So if you think you might want to get into marine science, but you're maybe not sure. Mm -hmm. Possibly doing an internship or volunteering for someone on the side or like just kind of getting your feet wet into the into the career in general can be really helpful to show you what you don't want and what you do want in a career. Um, I've learned just as much of what I don't want to do that as what mm -hmm. I, I do want to do. Yeah. So um, I would just, yeah, like put your Put yourself out there, get yourself into the space in any way that you can. Um, reach out to people online now that it's super easy. Everyone has like a Twitter or Instagram or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just sort of find the person that you might, you think whose job you want and then figure out how they got there. Maybe pick their brain, ask them some questions. You can't go wrong by by making a connection. That's how I've gotten a lot of my, my opportunities. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, just like, pretty much follow your dreams, which sounds really cheesy, but, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's important in the long run for you to be passionate about what you're working on five, 10, 15 years down the road. Um, yeah, to sort of understand that in the beginning of your career. So. Okay, okay. Uh, well, Sam, uh, I think those are uh, all the questions. Uh, I have to say one more time, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really glad that you asked me to do this. This was awesome. Okay, yeah, bye, thank good. you. Bye, yeah. nice to meet you. You too.
Espero te haya gustado este video y hayas aprendido algo nuevo. Te invito a que te suscribas al canal, actives la campana de notificaciones, dejes un like, comentario y compartas este video con todos tus conocidos para que poco a poco vaya creciendo este gran canal. De igual forma te invito a que me sigas en redes sociales para que estés al tanto de todo el nuevo contenido que estaré subiendo al canal. Ah, y no olvides seguir a Sam en Instagram, te dejaré el link acá abajo en la descripción. Y bueno, por mi parte es todo, nos vemos en el próximo video. Se despide de ti Fernando, hasta pronto.